This will be my review of the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. I have the ceramic white version here in my hands. And I'd have to say that the looks, the aesthetic of this phone, it's absolutely fantastic. It's a beautiful phone with the symmetrical curved glass front and back, the metal frame around. Now this ceramic white version does have a rose gold-ish frame around it. And depending on the color, that will change a little bit. The black one will have kind of like a black chrome look, etc. But overall, as far as the aesthetic, the look of the phone, absolutely fantastic. Materials used, Gorilla Glass 6 up front. The build quality is just, it's seamless. The transition between the glass and the metal frame, it's very smooth. There's no creaks or cracks or anything like that. Feels great in the hand. No issues as far as the build quality of this phone. Samsung displays, they make arguably the best or if not the best display on a smartphone. And the display on the S10 Plus, the dynamic AMOLED on this phone is no exception. The display is absolutely gorgeous. It's beautiful, it's breathtaking. Use whatever word you want. The screen on this device is just, you'll be in awe when you look at it. HDR10 Plus display, it's very nice. Now, out of the box, this is set to FHD Plus. So immediately, when you get your phone, unbox it, go to settings, and set your resolution to 1440p to get the maximum resolution out of the display. And I have mine set to the uh, vivid setting here. I do like me some saturated colors, but you can set it to more natural if you want. Now, I'll be honest with you, when I first saw this device, when it leaked, saw pictures, I actually almost considered not getting the phone because of the pill cutout. I don't like any cutouts or any notches or any obstructions in the display. The Note 9 does not have any notch or cutouts or anything like that, so I do enjoy this device as well. But honestly, after using this phone for a little while now, I've gotten used to it. The Samsung wallpapers that come with the phone, they hide the cutout pretty well. So you can see it's a little bit dark on this area. And <laughs> they have these wallpapers now that actually, they, it embraces the cutout. Here I have Bender, as you can see, and there's many others out there on Reddit, etc. So, <laughs> so the pill cutout, not really a problem for me anymore. That may or may not annoy some people, but for me, not an issue. Now talking about the edge display on this device, now, I've heard some people that they're actually getting some false touches on the edge of the display. For me, that's not really a problem. I use a case with my phone. I have this Rinke case right here that I've been using for a little bit now. With a case on, I hold my phone in my left hand. Now, it's not really a problem. You can download good lock. I believe in good lock. You can adjust the sensitivity of the edge display. So I haven't really messed with that yet, but there's that option there if you want to mess with that. But for me, the edge display, not a problem. And here is the always on display. I love this feature. I love how I don't have to turn on my phone. Just look at it, tells you the time, tells you the date, tells you the battery percentage, and it tells you whatever notification you have. Now, with that being said, some people are saying that, oh, it doesn't have an LED anymore. To me, yes, having an LED is nice, but to me, that doesn't really matter anymore. Because of the always on display, this will give you the notifications that you have on your phone, that you haven't looked at yet, etc tells you pertinent information immediately, and I find this very useful, very nice. One tap of the screen will give you the fingerprint scanner right there. And since we're talking about the fingerprint scanner, I'll be honest, the fingerprint scanner, the in-display ultrasonic scanner, has been a hit or miss for me. There are some days where it works pretty much 90 to 95% of the time. There are other days where, or pockets throughout the day that it just doesn't wanna work. Right now, put my finger on it, and as you can see, it missed. Um, do that again, and it works. See if I can do it five times in a row. And missed, okay? Okay, that's one, two, three, four, and five. Works five times in a row. So there are some times where it works just like as advertised, works pretty fast. There are other times where it just doesn't want to work. So it's been a hit or miss for me. Overall, I do like the in-display fingerprint scanner. I like where Samsung is going with this or just phones of the future where they're going in general now with the in-display scanner. It allows for a cleaner design. You don't need to have a capacitive scanner on the back of the phone or in the front 
no more home button, allows for a cleaner look. It's just, this is a first generation product. I expect this to be better and better and better with time, with software updates, and perhaps with a Note 10, it'll be better. Next year's Galaxy S11, I anticipate this scanner to be much better than what we have now. I do like where the tech is going, but as of right now, it's a hit or miss for me. But I'm gonna say it's not a deal breaker. Overall, I love this phone. Boom. Now this phone has dual stereo speakers, no issues with the sound quality, gets nice and loud, very clear. I watch a lot of videos on this phone and listen to a lot of music and I have no complaints with the speakers whatsoever. The speaker performance combined with the Infinity O display makes media consumption on this device really enjoyable and I love that. One UI, I love how Samsung puts everything on the bottom of the display, makes everything easier to reach. As you can see right here, brightness slider is on the bottom of the phone. I do like that. And then all the toggles are on the bottom half of the display. And I just like the design. It's on the bottom half of the display, easier to reach with your thumb, with your left-handed, right-handed. And I love the One UI dark mode. You turn on dark mode, the blacks are hella black, black AF, and it just makes, in my opinion, the UI look amazing. I mean, I'm gonna go through settings right now with the black background and with the touches of color on the icons here on the left side. I just love the way this looks. I mean, this is sick. Go to dev options real quick. I mean, with the blue right there and the black background, the blue toggles on the right side. I mean, this just looks absolutely awesome. I love the dark mode. And let me go to the Samsung browser. I love how when you turn on the dark mode, even the browsers uh, in dark mode. I mean, look at this. In a black background, white text. This is the ESPN website. Got to keep an eye on the dubs right there. They're still in first place. But look at this web page. Black background, white text. I mean, to me, I mean, this just looks sick. Now, for you, you might want to turn this on at night, easier on the eyes. But for me, I do it for aesthetics. I leave dark mode on 24 seven. This is nice. I love the dark mode. Some of the icons, some are saying they're a little bit too big, a little bit too cartoony. But for me, I run Nova Launcher anyway. As you can see here, I have like the dark pixel icons. I swipe this way and this is just widgets. And then one more time, this is the, the Nova companion. So I can have the Google feed on the leftmost page. So I run Nova Launcher anyway. I don't really use the Samsung launcher. So not really an issue for me. Now this Bixby button is now remappable. Thank you, Samsung. Now you can't completely get rid of Bixby. You can single press or double press. One of those options has to be Bixby, but for instance, this one, I have it double press to open Bixby. However, use the single press. I have it right now, just open the calculator, but you go into Bixby settings, open app, click on the gear icon, click on the cog, and you can choose to open whatever app you want using the Bixby key. Thank you, Samsung. I love that feature. And one thing I like about Samsung phones is the app's edge. So I have the app's edge set to the left side of the screen. I have my apps right here. Quick tools, tasks edge, smart select, the GIF animation here. I make GIFs all the time with this phone. I love it. Now, this being an S device, it doesn't have the S Pen where you can make a GIF that way, which is fine. This is cool to set it to access all these. So let's say you're in calculator and you're like, oh, I need to go to settings. You can just go like that and you're in settings. You don't have to go home or anything. Love that. And of course, you can multitask on a Samsung device and watch a YouTube video at the same time as you can see right here. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video. App number one. App number two, we're watching a video right here on the bottom right at the same time. You can move this around if you want. You can put it right in the middle between the two apps. So I don't really do this often, but the fact that you can do it, Snapdragon 855, eight gigs of RAM on this model. It can do this, no hiccups whatsoever. Happy to report that the battery life on this phone is great. Now for my usage, I get about five, five and a half hours of screen on time. Now if I've heard some other people get seven, eight hours of screen on time, but it does last me the entire day. My usage is I text a lot. I'm on IG pretty much all day. I watch a ton of YouTube. I browse a lot, about three to five calls every day. 
and I stream Bluetooth audio about two hours a day, sometimes three. So that's pretty much my usage on the daily. And I get about five, five and a half hours of screen on time with that. 4,100 milliamp hours on this phone. Now there was one day where I was in meetings all day and very, very light usage on the phone. So around seven o'clock that night, my phone still had 78% battery. And the screen on time was a little less than two hours. I think it was an hour and 50 minutes. Now the cameras on this phone, five cameras on this device. Three back here, you have the selfie camera and you have a depth sensor here on the front. And they take nice sharp photos. They have great dynamic range. The cameras on this phone makes the phone very flexible with the wide angle lens, your standard lens and your 2X optical zoom. You basically have the cameras here to take a picture in any situation. You want a wide angle or you need a wide angle, you got the wide angle lens. You have more of the standard photo, you have your standard lens. You want to zoom in a little bit, 2x optical zoom, you have that too. So it's a very flexible camera, pretty much will have you covered in any situation. I'm going to throw on some shots here in this video, so have a look for yourself. Picture quality is not a problem. Now switching over to videos, you can take 4K video from the back and now from the front as well. So selfie videos, if you vlog a lot, you can use your front facing camera to vlog with this device. Do that now in 4K, very nice. You can record HDR10 with this camera, HDR10+, 960 frames, slow-mo video. One thing I'll say about the cameras, the super steady mode. I'll throw in a clip right now that I took the other day. I mean like, it, just, it looks like you're using a gimbal. Now it uses the wide angle lens, it crops in and it stabilizes the footage electronically. But I mean, it's crazy. And I was running in that clip, the super steady mode of this camera, love it. And also the audio quality from the video recording here is great. I only really have two gripes of this phone, two gripes. And one I already kind of touched on earlier. Number one, software updates. Now I did get a software update already on this phone. This is the unlocked US model, by the way, Snapdragon 855. So I did get a software update. I think the security patch is February 1st, 2019. Historically, Samsung's not really the best in giving timely updates. So that's not really a gripe. That's just more of a we'll see kind of thing. Certainly not gonna be in pixel level where we get a security patch every month. So I'm not expecting that, but, and also I already touched on this, the fingerprint scanner. To me, it's a hit or miss. There are some days where it works pretty much 100% of the time. Other times, it just doesn't wanna work. It's very temperamental. For me, that's a little bit of a gripe, but overall, this phone is fantastic. The looks, the aesthetics, the materials used on this phone, top notch, check. The screen on this phone, you get the 3K display, dynamic AMOLED display, panel made by Samsung, the best display on any phone right now, check. Performance, Snapdragon 855, eight gigs of RAM on this one, you can get up to 12 gigs, up to one terabyte of storage, fast and smooth, snappy performance of this phone, performance, no issues, check. The feature set, the One UI, the customizability, the multitasking abilities of this phone, the always on display, which you can customize this by the way. It's just the feature set of this phone, how you can customize this phone to your liking. I mean, there's just way too much to talk about. That's a check, battery life. Now I said earlier, I get about five to five and a half hours. Other people are saying they're getting seven or eight and anywhere in between. I'm gonna give battery life with a 4100 mAh battery on this phone. I'm gonna give that a check. And finally, the cameras. You get five cameras on this phone. Well, this one is a depth sensor. Does that really count as a camera? Not really sure. The camera performance, both with picture taking and video recording, colorful pictures, great dynamic range. The video recording here is awesome with a 4K front and back now. I'm gonna give the cameras a check. My fellow Samsung Knights, are you gonna buy yourself a Galaxy S10 Plus? Or if you already have this phone, let me know down below what you think of it thus far. Or if you don't have it yet, do you have yourself the Note 9, the S9 or S9 Plus, or a Note 8 or a S8, S8 Plus from a couple of years ago? Are you planning to upgrade to this phone or are you just gonna wait for the Note 10? If this phone is any indication of what the Note 10 has to offer, I cannot wait for the Note 10. August cannot be here soon enough. Anyway, that's it. That's my review of the Galaxy S10 Plus. Let me know what you thought in the comments down below. 
Thanks for watching. Peace out.